Today, President Trump orders all funding to the World Health Organization to be halted immediately over the coronavirus scandal. Also, a memo reveals when Chinese President Xi knew the coronavirus outbreak was severe and an epidemic. Oh, and here's a spoiler alert. He didn't tell us. Ah, we've got a lot to get into, and it starts right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I'm Sarah Gonzalez. I said, I said. I don't know what you said. He's young Jiaping to me. I mean, it's just like if you're. If, is, is not, I don't know Chinese. I'm not French, so I'm not going to call you Henri. It's Henry. Right. <laughs> Xi Jinping. What is wrong with that, Jason? She. 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 You know what? If I see an X and an I, I'm going to say G, all right? And you're going to like it, okay? Because I'm not Chinese. I don't know, all right? I'm going to pronounce it the best I can. I don't expect you guys to say chorizo. <laughs> All right, you're going to be like, I want a chorizo and egg burrito. Anyway, I'm Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by Chad Prather, host of the Chad Prather Show, Woo-hoo. and uh, Jason Buttrell, who is already giving me crap, <laughs> chief researcher yeah, of be on the today, girl. It's be on. program. We're really excited to be here, as mm. you can tell. Uh, let's get into President Trump, who has ordered all funding to the World Health Organization to Finally. be halted immediately over all of this coronavirus scandal. Here is a little bit of what President Trump had to say yesterday. Today, I'm instructing my administration to halt funding of the World Health Organization while a review is conducted to assess the World Health Organization's role in severely mismanaging and covering up the spread of the coronavirus. Everybody knows what's going on there. <laughs> American taxpayers provide between $400 million and $500 million per year to the WHO. In contrast, China contributes roughly $40 million a year and even less. As the organization's leading sponsor, the United States has a duty to insist on full accountability, one of the most dangerous and costly decisions from the WHO was its disastrous decision to oppose travel restrictions from China and other nations. They were very much opposed to what we did. Fortunately, I was not convinced and suspended travel from China. Now, uh, I want to get into how this kind of uh, plays along with the other top headline of the day, which is the memo that revealed that uh, Chinese President Xi. Xi. Actually, I do kind of like, because I feel, I feel like I'm calling him a she. I feel like it's insulting, so I'm going to go with it. Uh, <laughs> President Xi, Xi, Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping. Am I doing it? I like it. Sure. Okay. Uh, he knew that the outbreak was an epidemic and severe and was transmissible human to human and uh, still let it go on for days and days and days. So I do want to get into that. But just off the top, off the cuff, Chad, uh, Del- uh, de- halting all funding yeah. to the World Health Organization. Oh, hell it's about yeah. damn time. Look at Xi over there. Look at that picture of him. Kind of looks like, kind of looks like Glenn he's Beck. Like, oh. Kind of looks like Glenn Beck, <laughs> no, he with dark hair. Yeah, look at him. This is like Beck. He probably has a conspiracy going on. Listen, <laughs> let me tell you something. I am 100% I, for it. I mean, forget it, man. Stop with all this nonsense. The UN and everything associated with them is as useless as <laughs> on a board. They really are. They are useless. Nobody. How many times have you ever been sick and said, I wonder what the World Health Organization would say about my diagnosis? No one's going to do that. Oh, my God. We got the Center for Disease Control right here in America that can't control disease. They don't know. If you go to the CDC right now, and I'm just going to use them in this, as an example, because the WHO ain't far behind them. And I don't mean Roger Daltrey. I'm talking about the World Health Organization. <laughs> CD says that, CDC says that this year in the first quarter, between 25,000 and 65,000 people have died of the flu. That's a big gap. That's a 40,000 person gap that they don't even know how many people have died from influenza. We're not talking about the Chinese virus. We're talking about the flu. So the who doesn't know. They don't know what the hell's going on. I mean, Trump says, well, you know what's going on with that. Everybody knows what's going on with that. The guy is great. We need $500 million here in America. We need that pumped back into this economy because we've Put it voluntarily on life support when it didn't need it. So, yeah, let's have it. And don't forget, I, my social media blew up yesterday with people saying Trump wants to just kill everybody. He just wants to kill everybody. Oh. What planet do you live 
on. And by the way, if you think Trump is that horrible, oh, that'd be really great for re-election. Yeah. Right? Killing what about, everyone. What that's about really win him back when, I mean, I mean that's, that's really going to be great for the folks, you know, they're going to turn out and vote for him. I want to read something to you here, and I'm, we'll get to Buttrell. He knows some things. Um, <laughs> January 31st, by the way, in the middle of January, the, the World Health Organization said it's not communicable between people. Yeah, let, and let's pull that up. We have that tweet. It's from uh, January 14th. Okay, pull it up. Then I want to I share something real Here quick. I'm going I'm to capitalize Preliminary on Preliminary investigations conducted by the Chinese authorities have found no clear evidence of human-to-human transmission of the novel coronavirus. That was January 14th. Go okay, on. let's take it to New York. Remember, New York's the epicenter, right? Everybody's dying in New York, which, by the way, the New York Times, who I hate to quote, just added 3,700 people to their list of 10,000 that are dead who never even tested positive for coronavirus, but because they died in a the time of corona, then they automatically are dead because of corona. So, January 31st, POTUS says, eh, no travel from China. Everybody calls him a racist. Osiris Barbeau, New York City, City Health Commissioner, on February 2nd, she says, no, that's misinformation. February 2nd, Mark Levine, New York City Health Council, says, hey, huge crowds. We need to get down there in the crowds. Powerful defiance against the coronavirus scare being, you know, utilized by the POTUS. February 24th, Pelosi says, hey, Chinatown, people come down, join the crowds. Bill de Blasio, May, March 2nd, he tells New Yorks, go out on the town, visit the cinema. Who really? Really wants to kill people. Mm. I'm done. <laughs> Jason, uh, that's a hard, hard to follow up. Uh, yes, but I, would, I will try. And, and I do want to hear from you um, because I know that you have been on top of how deep uh, whose relationship goes with China. Yeah. Which, I mean, this tweet is just kind of, it's just the tip of the iceberg, I think, with how, how much who is in bed with China and repeating Chinese communist propaganda, uh, which certainly doesn't protect America, when it comes down to it, even though we're the ones who are providing the brunt of the uh, the funding for the World Health Organization, Jason. Yeah, the vast majority of, of their funding comes directly from us, and that and that's true across the board on yeah. programs just Everything. like this organization's. Yeah. We provide way too much funding. Yeah, and the UN, what a dumpster fire that is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely worthless to begin with. Um, and pretty much everywhere they go, they spread a bunch of chaos. I mean, it's remember what happened in Haiti, for crying out loud. Um, anyway, but that's a tangent. Um, we should not, it's absolutely ridiculous that we spend $500 million to an organization to where China, as the president said, only gives them $40 million. But that's just in funds that we know of that we don't know about political favors. And that's where I'm getting at with the WHO. They're absolutely doing political favors. Sure. From the moment this began, every time the Chinese said something, the WHO backed them up. I mean, it is ridiculous. They talk about uh, human, non-human human transfer on January 14th. We've seen that the Chinese, through leaks, they had this virus fully sequenced by the end of December. Fully sequenced. So they knew everything about it, all of its, you know, the complete, I'm not a scientist, but the genetic breakdown and DNA of, every, of the entire virus, they fully sequenced. Are you telling me that they didn't know that it was transmittable by human to human? Of course they knew. Mm -hmm. And that report that I think you were just talking about through, through the AP, or... Have yep. we talked about that yet? Um, Go ahead. That report from the AP Bring that it. said that they knew, in fact, that, and they were conspiring on, you know, from the inside channels to say, look, let's not get, let this information get out. Let's go ahead and let the uh, Lunar New Year celebration yes. carry on. Um, Which was, I mean, like, it was a, a mass banquet for tens of thousands of people and millions began traveling through yeah. for those Lunar New Year celebrations. So this, we're not talking about a small amount of people. And what, what the AP, their verbiage on it was very, very careful. They were like, we don't know if this started at the top or if it started at the bottom. And because they were so scared to report to you know, the president, she and, all, and the rest of them, that because uh, they're, you know, communist bureaucracy or what. But this is absolutely Chernobyl. And we've heard a lot of people mm. on the left say, is this President Trump's Chernobyl? No, no, this is mm. a carbon copy of Chernobyl, but it happening with the virus in China. Mm. It's exactly that. That was the entire reason. Like, communist uh, bureaucracy was what, can, you know, kept them from doing something about that in the very beginning. They could have gotten all of those people out and they'd have been safe. Yeah. Exactly the same in China. Yeah. When are people, when are leftists going to wake up to this? I mean, it's every, some kind of catastrophe happens. Like, you know, after the Cold War, Soviet Union goes down. By and large, socialists kind of went away. They yeah. tucked their tail between their legs, legs, they went under a rock. And then this happens every decade or so. They pop back out. Once the bad PR has gone away and say, look, this is what we need. I mean, guys, if there's, if there's any reason at all to vote for Donald Trump, exhibit A right here. This is what you're getting. I'm sorry, but the entire Democratic Party is moving that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Bernie's out. His ideas are still alive. He's pretty much driving the agenda right now. Mm. You have Bernie, but he pretty much wants the, exactly the same as what uh, 
as uh, you have Biden, but you have pretty much exactly what he wants, what Bernie wants. Yeah, that's the left right now. He, they demand it. That's why he had whether he believes it or not. Joe Biden has to give it to him. That's what they're demanding. Why else would Bernie be uh, endorsing him right now? Right. He's endorsing him because Bur- uh, Biden and, and back channels saying, look, this is the direction we're going anyway. What they're going to get. There's no question get. about that. I, oh, my gosh. Jason Buttrell. <laughs> I love that you compared that to Chernobyl in the way that you did. And people have been asking that question. And since people don't read books, go watch the miniseries that recently came out about Chernobyl. Just watch it and see how communists espouse their propaganda. That's what they do in China. And the idea that China wants to come out and say, well, we've only had, what, 3,800 people who have died from this. They're so full of crap. I mean, the idea that they can continue to proliferate this communist propaganda and force feed it to their people. And by order of law, you got to believe it. They think the rest of the world's that stupid, too. Yeah. They do. So go watch that. They hit it. They hit it. They swept it under the rug. And of course, they knew what was going on in China. And here we are. And the problem to, to circle back around to WHO, the problem with organizations like the WHO is supposed to be an international organization. But their leadership always comes from s- different parts of the world. Mm-hmm. The current leader comes from Ethiopia. And I believe we talked about it on this show, um, but Glenn talked about it on his show as well. But Ethiopia is one of the prime places where China is trying to take over Africa. Sure. Their Belt and Road Initiative, Ethiopia owes them. To, this is they're kind of doing economic warfare on all those little countries in, in Ethiopia. The way they're doing that is they're moving in. They're saying, "Hey, don't worry about it. We're going to front all the bills. We're going to you're going to have to pay us back eventually, but we're going to build all your roads. We're going to build your railroads, all this stuff." And Ethiopia was they're called. I think it was actually called the gateway to China's Belt and Road. Mm-hmm. Um, Ethiopia is are the the current. WHO uh, director used to be in the government, mm-hmm. so he has strong ties to them. Right when uh, China was built, uh, was doing all these initiatives, uh, Ethiopia can never pay those bills back with money. Mm-hmm. Now you have uh, organizations like the WHO, where the, many of their people that work for for them still operate in that system. That's ridiculous. Uh, when someone, when an organization like that that's supposed to be trusted, like the WHO, can be. You know, basically, uh, you know, like like a mob, like a mobster, you know, trying to break someone's leg and saying, you will do this for us. Mm-hmm. That's the relationship right now. And we should not be funding them. Yeah. Absolutely not. And I'm so glad he did this. This is nothing political at all. In right. fact, when, when the director of the WHA said that President Trump shouldn't be politicizing this at this yeah. point, they're the one that started it. Yeah. They're the one that started it. Well, and also speaking of politicizing it, you know, they are also the ones who came out and said that uh, this pandemic should not be a reason to stop allowing access to abortion. <laughs> I'm like, who really is politicizing this when you guys are over here trying to talk about abortion in the middle of an upper respiratory virus pandemic? And you guys are going to use that to talk about abortion? Seems a little bit weird. You know, we talk about a lot about uh, China and how a lot of people here in America refuse to see how awful the Chinese government really is. And yes, we mean the Chinese government. We don't mean the Chinese people, obviously people. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, <laughs> we had the uh, the whole big issue with the NBA backing China not that long ago. A lot of NBA players did not want to say anything bad about uh, their overlords over in China. Hollywood. Yeah, the, Hollywood The virtue as well. kings and queens of the yes, entire country. Yes. Well, so now I would love to hear their, their uh, commentary on this because uh, McDonald's had to apologize after there was a, uh, a, a McDonald's in China that refused service to African Americans. Now, this was after reports of um, uh, a, no, it, a large it, African it, it, migrant community. Blacks, not African Americans. Blacks. Okay. They were they were from Africa. Right. That's a large African community there in in that industrial city. Okay. Yes, I, I apologize. I, I, no, I'm with you. I'm African with you. I just, I'm in that mood. Community. No, you you go off. You go off. African Americans. It's black. Um, and so there was a large. Black community who I guess there were reports that they had uh, the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And so they just put a note, a sign on the door that said uh, black people cannot come to this restaurant. Let me go back to his point. (laughs) And I'm going to tie this back in. Watch what I do here. I'm going to take you on a little journey. China's out of arable land. They can't farm. They have nothing left. They don't have anything. So they have to go into Venezuela. They have to go into Africa. They have to go into America, believe it or not. Yeah, they own a lot of land here. They have to go in there and find arable land in order to make crops to feed their 1.45 billion people, right? So they go in there and they take over places like Ethiopia. Well, guess what happens in this industrial place? A lot of Africans wind up moving to China because you don't think of China as being a place where a lot of Africans would go, but they're there. And all they want is a whopper. 
I mean, a Big Mac, whatever, I don't know. It's all the same. It tastes the same. It's from the same processed soybean. I don't know. Which, again, they can't grow in China because they don't have any arable land. So here they are. They just want to go in there and get some extra Mac sauce, a couple of nuggies. That's all they want. And they're like, no, no, can't come in here. You can't come in here. And McDonald's gets wind of this, and they're like, no, whoa, hey, dude, this is a PR nightmare. Now, we don't care about your PR. <laughs> That's what went down, man. So they shuttered the windows out. No McDonald's. Yeah. I'll take a pandemic over that any day. I mean, Jason, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see if any of these NBA players, I mean, the NBA is predominantly black, if they have any sort of response to how China uh, just treated black people. I'm sure they would. I'm sure that they would want to respond, but the I NBA would, will not let them. <laughs> guaranteed. The NBA, that, that's, of course. that's how ridiculous the relationship is between American businesses uh, and China is because like you said 1.5 billion people that trumps morality that trumps virtue mm -hmm. that's exactly why no one in Hollywood will come out and say why are you jailing millions of Muslims over <coughs> there and at the same time they'll criticize the Muslim travel ban right even though right. it wasn't a Muslim travel ban but the same they'll talk about that but they won't talk about that why because their bosses the the producers and the studio owners are like don't talk about that because we got a multi-million dollar movie or the Avengers or whatever mm -hmm. that's just, a, we want a really good box office in China, so let's just not talk about that. Meanwhile, all you people that voted for Trump are very bad because of the Muslim ban. Shut up. Mm. It's absolutely ridiculous. And again, those are the kings and queens of American virtue, supposedly. They're, gonna, they're the ones that tell you while you're such a bad person when they're the ones that support organizations like China and the well, McDonald's came out. Last word. McDonald's came out and said, look, this is not representative of us. We're very inclusive. I don't think anybody's ever doubted that. <laughs> like, I go to McDonald's, I get my nuggies out, and I got to talk through the plexiglass. I don't know what she's saying to me. Spanish. I don't know. We know you're inclusive. We know. But that's what you get in China. I would also say I don't think McDonald's calls them nuggies, and I have some questions for you <laughs> off air on why you continue to call them nuggies. Why not? Uh, when we come back, Andrew Cuomo signs an executive order uh, requiring all New Yorkers to wear face coverings when they're out in public. We'll get into that first. We want to thank our sponsor, NetSuite. Now, there is obviously enough uncertainty to go around right now, and no one is feeling that more than business owners, especially you small business owners, you uh, true entrepreneurs at heart. With so many critical decisions to make, you need the right numbers. You need them right now. NetSuite by Oracle is the world's number one cloud business system, and it reduces the uncertainty by giving you visibility and control. You can obviously access it when you're away from the office, when you're sitting on your couch in quarantine. Wherever you at, you've got your information on the cloud. They give you financials, cash flow, payroll, inventory. Everything is in one place, so you really know your numbers. You really know your bottom line, and you can have total control of your business. Uh, like I said, you can work from anywhere with immediate clarity on critical information right at your fingertips. You don't have to guess. You don't have to wait. You can make smarter decisions with confidence. You've got the visibility into your numbers. Join Blaze Media and over 20,000 companies who trust NetSuite to stay in control. You can receive your free guide, Managing Business Uncertainty, and schedule your free product tour right now. It is netsuite.com slash why. Again, I mean, if you like growing businesses, you like profiting, I hope you do. Otherwise, you shouldn't be running a business. Don't wait. Get your free guide and schedule your free product tour. That is at netsuite.com slash why, netsuite.com slash why. Uh, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is uh, signing an executive order requiring all New Yorkers to wear face coverings in public. Obviously, New York City especially is a hotspot for the coronavirus pandemic here in America. Um, so mask or face covering. If you're riding on public transit where it's impossible to maintain social distancing or if you're walking on a busy sidewalk, you must wear a face covering like a bandana. Uh, or a mask, and this is expected to go into effect on Friday. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I could do it. I just went to the hospital uh, recently for um, my checkup, and they made us put on the masks, and I could barely get through wearing the mask just for a couple minutes because I felt like I was going to suffocate in the darn thing. Um, Chad, what are your thoughts on this? There's a lot. Uh, there's, first a lot, of all, there's a lot going on up there. There's a lot. So first of all, what I want to know is this. 
wear the masks. Put them on. And if you don't realize, people in China, people in Europe, people in New York City, they, they're very close to each other. Mm -hmm. They breathe a lot of the same air. They live in buildings where, you know, there's recirculated air throughout the buildings with a couple of little fiberglass filters that are hopefully getting rid of this kind of stuff, and it's not. You're breathing each other's stuff. It's like living on an airplane, right? You're right there. You're crushed up against people, and you're used to not having your own private space. We're kind of accustomed to that. We live in Texas. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. Wear your masks, okay? And in two weeks, I want you to get back to us and tell us if that made the difference. Because yeah. I want to know which is it. You said that even if we social distance, that tens of thousands of people are going to die. And now that tens of thousands of people haven't died, they're saying it's because we social distanced. So which is it? I, I want to know the answer to that. I give it to you. If you want to wear the mask, wear the mask. You're an American. You still have liberty, even though you're trying to give it up. But I have a feeling at this point, if somebody said, get on this train car, we're going to take you to a place called Auschwitz, and it is going to cure you and make sure you never get coronavirus. I got a feeling people would line up Amen. to get on that train car to go to that extermination camp, right? And that is a long, that is, that is a very long stretch of a, of a metaphor there, an example to use that. But that's where we've gone to. This is getting too close to a point of tyranny. If you want to wear a mask, choose to wear a mask. Yeah. If you are, if you need to isolate or quarantine, isolate or quarantine. If you need to get away from people because you have an underlying or uh, an immune system that is just not good, mm -hmm. everybody's like, ah, do you want people to die? No, I don't. But I'm also not a premeditated murderer because I advance the causes of liberty and make sure people have a choice. Mm -hmm. We've had people who work here who are in chemotherapy. They come in, they're wearing their mask, and we don't go hugging all over them. We don't breathe on them. We don't, you know, hey, touch their face. or anything. We're not doing that because they have a compromised immune system. And they were among the one of the first people to start working from home. Exactly. So when situations like that happen, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that are going on with a lot of people out there. This is not the only thing killing people today. And this really, in the grand scheme of things, isn't killing a lot of people. Woo, so, you're you gonna get you're gonna get to hell for I, I, oh, I agree I'm already with you. catching the hell. I don't I even agree care. With you. I just you're not allowed to say that for some reason Look, you're, these days. You're not okay. allowed you're not allowed to engage in looking at statistics. I want Jason's facts. smart and I want to go to him. But let me just say, and I want you to watch my show next, okay? I want you to watch Chad Prather's show because I get on this. You're going to die one day. I know this is hard for you. You're gonna die. Something's gonna kill you. Something. And I hope it's a long time from now gonna die <laughs> Jason no one is forcing me so I'm first a I'm never wearing one of those damn masks because they look stupid I will say can I just say really quickly I you can did buy at watchchad.com but whatever <laughs> I, no. I oh I yeah. did uh, buy what it was a couple weeks ago I bought like pink camo yeah. bandanas did you just in case I was like if they're gonna force me to wear a mask it's gonna be cute well the bandanas right? look, look, look look a little cooler yeah, so I'd be more inclined to do also, that. Also, a little bit wouldn't. more like bad a, right? Yeah, like you don't know if she's gonna mess up my stuff. Do you, don't you don't know if she's here to rob me or <laughs> yeah. if she's scared of the virus. That's kind of cool. I agree, um, but I'm never doing any of that stupid crap, um, and no one's ever forcing me yeah. to wear that stupid crap. Right. In the United States of America, no one's telling me to put something on. Mm -hmm. They're not effing doing it. Not doing it. I'm not doing it, and I'm sorry. Like the more you. I've said this before, but there needs to be whether this, you know, who, who needs to take the lead on this is state legislatures. Mm -hmm. State legislatures need to get together, even though in New York it's not going to happen because it's all progressive filled. But hopefully here in Texas, there's been some measures that have been blanket measures that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. There's like places like, I don't know, like San Angelo, Texas or Big Spring, Texas, that don't have the issues that Dallas county has mm -hmm. but they're I'm not, and I'm not calling those two communities out because I don't really know but there's been others but they're doing heavy-handed actions like they're doing in Dallas County that's not needed mm -hmm. right? right I mean the, the governor even Abbott Collin has County which is which is which is right next to Dallas County even right. Collin County <laughs> does not have the cases or the deaths that Dallas County right. has we're still being subjected to the stay-at-home crap right so I, I think that state legislators need to say okay now that you've done this now that you've pissed all over the Constitution I want to know why you did it so be fully transparent with all the data if Cuomo doesn't have to because it's already the People's Republic of New York you know like he doesn't have to he, they're gonna and it's your prerogative and option to move the heck out of there which millions and millions of people are doing every single year because of that stupid crap they're doing the same thing in California and then pretty much they're coming to Texas and they're still voting blue for some freaking weird reason yeah. makes absolutely no sense but this is the United States 
No one has the right to force you into doing these things. Yeah. They just don't. And they need to be held accountable after the fact. So I want to hear what both of you would have to say, because this is an argument that I hear back often, and it drives me bonkers. Uh, when someone, to both of your points, they would say, well, your, if your right to liberty infringes on my right to liberty, you don't have that right anymore. And I'm like, but it's not infringing on your, like, we all have the right to stay home or go out, right? We all have the right to wear masks or not wear masks. I don't see how that particular right infringes upon someone else's liberty. I get communicable diseases. I get that. But it's just interesting that people don't have the same regard when you're talking about, you know, uh, it's my right to eat whatever the hell I want. And if I get super obese and I oh. die from it, that was my right to treat my body and do whatever I want with my body, right? Like, but somehow now we have an upper respiratory virus and you're not, you have to wear masks, you have to protect yourself. It just seems really odd coming from a place where it's like no one gave a crap what you did with your body if you wanted to, to take yourself into an early grave and now all of a sudden you have a duty to protect your body. I get it, you gotta protect others too, but doesn't everyone have that right to a certain extent? Yeah, what's, what's scary though is that people are not, they don't think in America that way anymore and that's really what scares me. Like what, what made America so different and why everyone in Europe and everywhere else in the world was laughing at us back in the 1700s is they're like, oh my gosh, that's never gonna work. People will be accountable for themselves, right. personal responsibility, like in their eyes, if there was a, if, if there was a, a pandemic, then they would lock it down. And, and the people would be perfectly fine with that. They'd, they'd just tell us what to do and we'll do it. Americans back in that day would have been, what do I need to do to be personally responsible for my neighbor? Right. That's how we used to think in this country. Yeah. So me saying, I'm never gonna let anybody tell me what to wear, it's, but don't get me wrong, I'm gonna be personally responsible for me and you guys. Right. I'm not gonna go out if I feel sick. Right. I'm not gonna go into heavily populated areas you know, and help spread this thing around because I'm personally responsible. Right. I'm not gonna wait for the government to step in. That's when you screw up. Mm. Like those spring break kids in Florida. Right. Like you were being a-holes to the rest of the people in your communities. Yeah. Because now you force the government to step in. Yeah. When you all cram packed in there and help spread this thing. And 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 I almost I kind of think, Chad, it's one thing we could have the conversation, but it's one thing to say if you have already been confirmed as sick with this, you have to stay home, you have to quarantine. I still kind of have a problem with that, but Let's set, that, let's set that off to the side. It's another thing to tell people you have to do this, you have to wear face masks without any confirmation that they're even sick. Like I can't transmit something that I don't have. Yeah, I mean, okay, bad analogy, but let's say I get in the car today or the truck and I'm driving home and somebody steps out in front of me or they drive out in front of me and I hit them and I kill them. It's gonna happen somewhere in America today, tonight. It's gonna happen. So it wasn't my fault per se. Right. You know, I just, the only fault I had was I was using my right to drive my vehicle and they drove out in front of me. Do I forfeit that right? Did I, should I have not been driving because their health and safety was going to be threatened in some way? That doesn't, it just, it's a bad analogy, but it doesn't ultimately, you get the point. It yeah. doesn't line up in that way. Yep. America's about personal responsibility yes. yep. and we've lost that. I mean, this reminds me of the Roman Catholic Church, uh, you know, as, as, as centuries have gone by where they say, you don't read the Bible, we'll leave that for the priest to do, because you aren't smart enough to understand what it really says. So we're going to read it for you, and we're going to interpret it for you. That's what people are doing to the, the Constitution. It's what they're doing to American liberties, and, and we're just lining up to obey the overlords. Mm. Well, sad but true. Uh, all right, we've got a lot more coming up. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Black Rifle Coffee Company, which is getting me through quarantine mm. right now. I don't even want to get up in the mornings. I'm going to be honest. I'm like, this sucks. This is awful. I don't want to homeschool my kid. I'm sorry if you think that makes me a bad mom. I didn't sign up for it with a full-time job. Previously, before I had this job, I was like, I was homeschooling in kindergarten. I loved it. I had the time to do it. Now I don't have time to do it, but Black Rifle is what gets me through the day, especially with their double caffeinated blend. Yes, I'm drinking a small amount of it. I know I'm not allowed to have a certain amount of caffeine. Mm -hmm. All right, I got it. Uh, but Black Rifle Coffee Club is what you really want to get into, especially while you are sitting at home. Uh, you can go on their website, Look at all the different varieties that they have. Pick your favorite blends and they will ship it directly to your home. Uh, you're getting a discount 
on all of the coffee that you're buying and you're getting free shipping. I got you another discount on top of that. If you go to blackriflecoffee.com slash why, it is blackriflecoffee.com slash why. If you enter discount code why, that's W-H-Y, you will get 20% off on top of that. So you're getting a discount on top of a discount. No reason not to do it. Ship it directly to your house. You don't have to go out to the grocery store in the middle of a pandemic to get the world's best coffee. It is blackriflecoffeeclub.com. I'm sorry, blackriflecoffee.com slash Y, promo code Y. It is. Emails. Operation Gridlock is underway at uh, the Michigan State Capitol. There are like thousands of people who, if we can show this uh, this video, they are lining up to the exit. They've got American flags. Uh, the the backup goes for miles. This is all of these people who are uh, lining up to protest Governor Gretchen Whitmer's stay at home order. Now, this is, of course, we've talked about it on the show. It is one of the most restrictive stay at home orders in the country. Uh, you can't grow your own plants. You can't grow your own vegetables, apparently. You can't buy like random stuff from the store like seeds. But you uh, can buy pot. Yeah, you can buy pot. You can buy alcohol. So alcohol, very, very essential. Uh, growing your own vegetables in the time of a pandemic, not so essential, according to Governor Whitmer. Uh, some protesters had signs that said tyranny is worse than the virus and Good honk if you love liberty. You know, you guys are talking about this, and I think it is a very real thing that is, is a, thankfully growing in within these Americans who I think maybe at first were okay with being told to stay home. And we were all like, uh, guys, you don't want to, that's not, no, that's not what America's about. And they were like, well, we can do it for the virus. And now I think there is a, just a growing feeling within Americans uh, who maybe have been okay with it at first who are like, uh, we're not going to do it anymore. We're yeah. not going to do it anymore. You need to open the city back up. You cannot treat us like this. We live in America. Yeah, so I got a few things to say on this. <laughs> First off, all the people that are st right there, all the people that's sitting in that line right there, I guarantee you've seen on social media or in the media, um, some people saying, oh my gosh, they're just trying to get people killed. Yeah. They're saying that from their home offices, they're still getting paid because they have a job like I do. Yeah. Right. You know, that's this that's doesn't true. bother them. So yeah. they can sit back and they can be like, oh my gosh, those people. But I guarantee you every single person in there probably has a family member or themselves probably lost their job. Yep. They worked in the food Food service, they worked in something like that, and they're not working right now. So, and, and it's not just that they're not working, they're not working because the government has forced right. them out of a job. Exactly right. I don't, I tell you what, the more things, the, the more you see people like this governor in Michigan, or you see Cuomo in New York forcing people to do things, or was it, where was it, was this in Louisiana where, mm -hmm. like you said, they, at first they were fine with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just let you do this for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But don't push too far. Mm -hmm. Now you have that in that where the there was that church where they tried to have a drive-in church service yeah. and police turned them away. I'm sorry, you have no right to do that. Mm -hmm. Now the powers that are given to the state gov the state governments or is look, you have this this authority, but you ha it has to be matched with an actual reason for it. Right. So you can't just do it just because it, you know whatever the hell you wanted to do and you're like, okay, I'm the governor, so I'm doing this. No, no, no. There is checks and balances on that. How can you say that people that are sitting in their freaking car Listening to, you know, the, the broadcast on, on, on their devices and they're just all in the parking lot in their car mm -hmm. are spreading the virus. They're not. Mm -hmm. So I hope every single cop that enforced that law, they're, they're, held, they're held accountable for that. Or, or at least the, the commander, the police chief or whatever that told them to do that. And that goes all the way up the chain of command. But this needs to happen, from, again, all the way to the top, all the way to the governor's office. Now, you're going to see more stuff like this, I think. Mm -hmm. I saw a story where uh, Ammon Bundy was uh, organizing some people in Idaho where they're going to be like, no, we're, we're screw that. It's going to come to civil unrest. It's going to do that. The more they push, Americans are not going to stand for that. I guarantee there's more people like us around this table than there are like the, you know, the, the people that are willing to just curl up and say, please, whatever you want to do, I'll mm -hmm. do it. No, that's not what this country's about. Yeah, Chad, uh, I just saw there was a county in Florida that enforced a curfew from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. And they did clarify, even if you are out walking your dog, you're still going to get a ticket. <laughs> I'm going to jail. <laughs> If I yeah. live in that county, I'm going to jail. Same. Dude, kiss my ass. Well, I'm like, what about the people Listen, who have nighttime jobs? Uh, I mean, look, here's the deal. What, are you telling me something's more communicable when the sun's down? I, I mean, that's dumb. I mean, let put yourself <laughs> in this. First of all, Jason, I want to ask you a question. Just yeah. simple yes or no. Do you think Whitmer, do you think that she is really uh, doing this on a power trip, or does she have people's best interests at heart? A power trip. Power trip. It's, it just seems that way, right? Because if, yeah, if I had a... 
a cabin on the lake and I wanted to go quarantine in the cabin on the lake, I'm putting my boots on. I'm going to my damn cabin. That's where I'm going and you can arrest me if that's the deal. But I'm going. If nothing else, just to prove a point, you're not going to do that. So back to your thing. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do, you can kill me over it. I'm going to do what I want to do. By God, here's the thing. You want to say, well, human life, this and that. Men and women have given precious blood for this country for you to have the liberty that you have and for you to spit on it by saying, I'm going to let some elected official that is in place to represent me because you are there. It's not, I had somebody come to me on social media and they said, well, it ain't about Trump. It's about the governors. No, it's about we the people. It's about we the people. And if you're so stupid as to think that a mask or social distancing or the fact that we're sitting around this table from a distance, that I'm not breathing her microbes right now that are coming out of her beautiful colored tan Mexican lips. I'm telling you, I'm breathing every bit of it. I'm breathing every, you know how much DNA Mm. is in this nasty bowl of fake flowers that has been with Glenn Beck for 13 years? Look, I know that this one comes out. You know how I know? Because I've been here. I can smell it. Now I'm gonna be I'm gonna be one of those NBA guys that touched a microphone against the coronavirus. So be it! I refuse! I refuse to let the liberty that men and women have died to give me go to hell because of this woman that got elected in Michigan. No! Amen. No! Hey, all right, I didn't do I'm it. Walking the dog. Oh, well, okay, <laughs> walk the back dog. in a minute. Back in a minute. <laughs> Uh, Representative Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. She's hot. Very good friend of the program. She's really not. (laughs) No, she's really not. (laughs) She, uh, She blasted her own party yesterday for its attempts to silence any discussion of the recent allegations of sexual assault uh, against Joe Biden. She said that it is legitimate to talk about the allegations and uh, that she finds that kind of silencing of all dissent to be a form of gaslighting. So was it was that her? Uh, did, what is that what she said? It's OK to talk about them. She said, is that a quote, she said uh, to, she was saying in response to a questioner who said that she really resented the fact that the other choice is someone who has a really long history of being creepy to women. Mm-hmm meaning uh, President Trump and Joe Biden, they both have it. And what Ocasio-Cortez said was, what you're voicing is so legitimate and real. That's why I find this kind of silencing of all dissent to be a form of gaslighting. Okay, so kudos to her for that. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate. I think it's rhetoric. legitimate to talk about these things. But, but, and if we want to have integrity, you can't say mm-hmm. both believe women support all of this until it inconveniences I, I, I agree. I agree. And all you got to do is... <laughs> You just had a look at the little feud going on, the Hollywood feud between Rose McGowan and Alyssa Milano, so which, good. which is just kind of, it's fun to oh, watch, I but I don't like either one of them, whatever. I don't care. Like, I don't, I don't have they're any, both I, wrong, though, so it's great are, to watch. They're both you know, wrong. Like, no, neither of them are right. And you have to understand, I don't have any animosity in me for really anyone. I just like to make fun of people because they say stuff and it's like, eh, really? <laughs> I do it. You make fun of me, I get to do the same thing. It's just a guilty pleasure. So I'm glad she says what she says. But this whole thing about let's talk about it. They didn't just talk about Christine Blasey Ford. Mm -hmm. They didn't just talk about that. They ran that man through the ringer. He was guilty and until proven innocent exactly. for something that allegedly happened 35 and, and, years and ago. And this has nothing to do with sexual assault, but look at Nick Sandman, you know, when the, when the guy's beating a drum in his face and he's sitting there and grinning. They ran him through the ringer he over this He says he's still video. getting death threats. It's ridiculous. So I want to do more than talk about it, to be fair. Mm. I, don't, I, I don't give AOC any kudos here because she has every... This, they, she would love to attack, attack Joe Biden. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really... Th- I don't really think she believes uh, in the whole, I, I think the believe all women thing was just convenient for them at the time because it let them, it was in the Me Too era, and it let them try to knock out certain people like Kavanaugh. Um, I don't give her any kudos because she's a non-Democrat in the Democrat Party, and Joe Biden is now the face of the Democrat Party. Do you, think, do you think she just hasn't been in Washington long enough to truly know how the game is played? No, I think she's just stupid, and that's why she doesn't you know how stupid? to think she's stupid? Oh, I mean, absolutely. I understand the yeah. ideological aspect of what you're saying, because, I, I, yeah, I go with that. Yeah. I see that. I mean, 
I say kudos to the rhetoric, but again, I think at the end of the day, it's just rhetoric. Yeah. Oh, sure. It's sure. just rhetoric. Yeah. The, the, I personally, and if we compare Kavanaugh in, especially the media, the media is god awful when you yeah. compare Kavanaugh versus Biden because Blasey Ford. Let's just take a look at that really quick. She had no she, corroboration. She had no corrob. Not only that, but they actually said, no, I don't yeah. think they were even at the same party. Yeah. Like, it was bad. Yeah. The only thing they had was a very passionate, you know, uh, testimony. That's all they had. That, that's it was, literally all they had. It was, I mean, she I cried. To, I just wanted to clean her glasses. She, <laughs> she didn't seem like she was all there. It was, it was bad. She was on a benzodiazepine. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I'm sitting there watching it with my nurse practitioner wife, and she's like, She's on meds. Mm -hmm. And my but, wife, who should have been feeling the sympathy there, she cried when Brett Kavanaugh I did too. got up there and I, I was angry listening to Christine Blasey Ford. <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the Biden allegation, though, is much stronger, yep. really, when you compare them. Yep. Because she actually mentioned to her friends that something and had happened. People at the time, mm -hmm. not years and years and years in later counseling. in counseling and yeah. oh by the way still didn't name who it was it was just an unnamed person right yeah definitely a lot more corroboration there so just on that right right there the media should be going all in mm -hmm. on this all in they're not in fact they're actually kind of attacking it instead of even offering up questions saying hey this is something we should talk about forget the fact that the democrats are acting completely different i mean we expect that because they're hypocrites and we don't expect them to oh, yeah. to, to go after biden but, but I, uh, I'm just, I, I cannot believe the state the media has gotten themselves in right now. They're already so uncredible. We do not believe a thing they say, but they just keep, when you think they can't double down on it, they double down on it again. Mm -hmm. I, I this know. has got to stop at some point, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I, I guess when they get run out of business. It's, which is ha which I think is happening. I think I really, so too. There's so many. I mean, and we're kind of at ground zero with that business. But there's so many upstarts happening. There's so many other ways that you you don't have to go to the New York Times to get like investigative reporting. You don't mm -hmm. have to go to the Washington Post. Mm -hmm. In fact, I judge people who still go there. I'm like, you're still <laughs> right? reading the New York Times. What the hell is wrong I, with look, you? Okay, well, you uh, you look at the deal. I mean, is that? That's the type of talk. I don't know. Anyway, I, I get confused sometimes. I, I don't know why well, I go to it just to see the hypocrisy and the back and forth and the self contradictory true. thing with that yeah. because they're like, oh, well, he doesn't have a pattern, but here's a pattern right. of the sexual harassment stuff. So I, I see stuff like that. But all you got to do is look at the press conference Monday where Trump says, okay, y'all watch your stuff. Mm -hmm. He puts it up on the screen, steps out of the way, and the network's flipped over. Yeah. They wouldn't let you watch it. Couldn't yeah. handle it. They wouldn't let you watch it. That right there ought to tell you all you need to know. Oh, so true. Back in a minute. <gasps> don't you can't watch our own reporting. <laughs> no, don't. Yeah. No, we didn't. It's fine. Don't Nothing replay is, what I said. I, I, I said it all right, but I don't want you replaying it. All right. Yesterday's poll. How do you feel about Trump's fiery response to reporters at yesterday's press briefing? Mm. Uh, Eighty-six percent of you loved it. Mm. Ten percent of you mixed reaction. Followed by four percent who hated it. I'm assuming that those are liberal trolls taking <laughs> the poll because I can't imagine you would be judging the mainstream media fairly and think that there was a problem with President Trump calling them out for their own reporting. Today's poll, what concerns you more, the coronavirus or an economic collapse? I, I'm pretty sure I know y'all's answers, <laughs> but I'm going to ask you anyway. You know the answer. I mean, do we have to? <laughs> An economic collapse. Economic collapse. Yes. Jason. Yeah. Um, they keep adjusting the models. They keep adjusting the models. Keep the taking I mean, them down. You know, not those kind and of down. And nothing, down. Nothing disputes the fact that 95%, I've said this before, but this is the, fa this is the fact about this that I cannot get over. 95% of the cases are mild. Mild. You'll think it's allergies. Mm -hmm. It's only 5% that have to go to the hospital. Right. That's it. Right. All right, well, let us know what you think. You can go to The Blaze's Twitter. That is, of course, at The Blaze. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Dang, weirdo. So many things.